Take a look at this tweet from uh, Alina Johnson. So uh, let's see. She is the editor in chief at the Free Beacon. Harvard to turn to essays, it says in email. This is Harvard basically declaring they intend to ignore the Supreme Court ruling and use loopholes to keep being racist. Watch out. The Harvard. email says, Dear members of the Harvard community, Today, the Supreme Court delivered its decision in Students for Fair Admissions versus President and Fellows of Harvard College. The court held that Harvard College's admission system does not comply with the principles of the Equal Protection Clause embodied in Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. The court also ruled that colleges and universities may consider in admissions decisions an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise. We will certainly comply with the court's decision. You see what they're saying there? Yeah, absolutely. They're now going to just, make everybody write about their race, and then they're just going to choose people who they think fit their woke ideology. And it's going to be, I mean, this is going to be very difficult to enforce, right? Because I certainly, I don't advocate for lying in any situation, but a lot of people are just going to lie. A lot of people are going to write their essays about how, yep. like, they were black or they were Hispanic or whatever when they were white so that they could get into the institution. Some people have actually done that before. Some people have done that uh, by saying they're Native American. I'm not sure if you've heard of, heard well, of this. this yeah. A missions consultant who went on time. this CNN interview, he is Indian. And he said he was black so he could get into Harvard Medical School. Oh, wow. And then he went on, and he's become one of the leading uh, advocates against overturning affirmative action. He said, this is wrong. Like, I should not have been able to get accepted just because I said I'm, you know, I'm black. And uh, now he's an admissions consultant and helps people. I don't know if he helps people game the system or, or whatever he does, but he went on CNN. And he said, we need to overturn affirmative action and has become one of the leading advocates in it. But well, I suppose the question is, how far will this go? Because affirmative action isn't just in universities. It's no. everywhere. It's We have the press secretary of the United States of America is simply hired because she's a black lesbian woman. So the vice president. Well, that, that, that's that's not over affirmative it's action. That's, that's, it's, a, that's, it's, that, I think that's that, an opinion made by a lot of people who think it may be the case. I'm talking about specific and overt examples in, in the public where they outright state it. Like, like for, for actual public jobs, mm -hmm. they actually put in the descriptions... Hey, we hire based on these criteria. Well, Irish the vice, need not apply, basically. The vice president, Joe Biden said, I'm going to get a woman of color. Like, that's it's affirmative, affirmative action. action. Right. Well, and this is, uh, this is an interesting point, right? Because we're told affirmative action is good. We're told the concept of diversity hires are good. But if you ever insinuate that someone was a diversity hire or that they're in their position because of affirmative action, that's evil. Why? Well, if listen, affirmative listen. action's good, why is that a bad thing to say? Corrine Jean-Pierre may be the worst press secretary mm -hmm we've ever seen man at least and i would say she is the worst in our lifetime she jen Psaki was really good at what she did mm -hmm. she was really good she, she, like as much you don't have to like her i i think she lied a whole lot mm -hmm. but she played the press that's what she did really Cre yes she was smarmy she's gonna sm no, circle back on that bro exactly yeah, that's, that's the job, job. yeah, yeah that's she, that's she, she nailed it be very smart she nailed it i despise it uh, I'm not even like even when it comes to Spicer, Kaylee, Mac Kaylee McEnany did really, really well because she had the book debunking the lives in the media. Mm -hmm. That is a fantastic way to handle it. As for Corinne Jean-Pierre, she's the worst. Here's the thing. She was hired by the, by the Biden administration for who knows what reason. Saying that she is was hired for affirmative action is an is just an insult with no as far as I know, there is no formal declaration that they were seeking out to hire a person based on these criteria. It's a weak argument. I have no idea about we her know, with Kamala. We yeah. know they do it, but Kamala was an elected position. So even there, Joe Biden saying, I want diversity, doesn't meet the same level. No. What I'm talking about is in our schools, in our yeah. fire departments, in our police departments, they explicitly say race as a criteria. Mm -hmm. That needs to end. If leftists want to be racist and then publicly declare they're racist, and then when it comes to hiring, we have to make that argument, we'll make the argument. But right now, affirmative action extends to a whole bunch of public institutions directly and overtly where the government literally allows you to take race into consideration for hiring for public jobs. That should not be allowed. And this should be the ruling to shut it down. I don't know if it will be, though, because this is specifically about university admissions. Yeah. No, I mean, 100%. I agree with all that. I think that there is a difference between a job posting saying we are going to hire people based on these racial characteristics and someone saying they're going to pick a VP based on those credentials. I just think both are really scummy and slimy and stupid. Well, I agree with you. The, the, it's, it's remarkable to me. That there are, I don't, I, I just don't get it. Are, are people, the average person is just stupid and doesn't care? 
I, yeah. When you go to them and yes. you say, listen, listen. The average listen. person is, thinks that if a, a square peg in a square hole means that it succeeded. Here's, that, what, here, here's, here, here, here's how polling works. I have a question for you, Seamus. Yes, hit me. Hit do me you, with it. Uh, actually, let me ask Ian. <laughs> Ian, do you think uh, universities should be allowed to reject an applicant based on their race? No. All right, that's uh, one vote in favor of opposing affirmative action. Uh, let me ask you another question, Ian. Do you think that universities should be allowed to uh, 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 allowed to approve applicants based on race if it helps bring diversity and give opportunity no. to underprivileged no. uh, groups? Bring the best people, man. I do not care what you look like or who your dad was. This is how the pollsters do it. You go to someone and say, should, should Harvard be allowed to let minorities into the school to help end uh, in inequality? Mm -hmm. Everybody says yes. An Everett pollster goes out and says, do you think Harvard should be allowed to reject a candidate based on their race? Everyone says no. You see how that yeah, works? Because yeah. if you're allowing someone to come in based on their race, that means you are rejecting everyone else based on their race. Quite literally. That means that for, in order for that to exist, two applicants come in, a Asian one and a black one, and you say too many Asians, not enough black people. That's how it works. One would be rejected. So this is how pollsters operate. And this is how the public operates. The left uses this this language manipulation, gender affirming care. Like, where did that come from? I don't you know, know. What I mean? this is what the yeah. affirmative action. Just call it racist. Yeah. Race based admissions, race based hiring. Do you believe race? Uh, do you believe we should have uh, race as a criteria in, in job applications? No. Yes or no? No, no, no not unless, unless it's like an acting Aside part. from casting for a movie, look, if you're yeah. going to do a Netflix reboot, right? But it's I mean, true. I, I, you know, nope. the way you look is not even important then? in acting. Nope. It is. <sighs> yeah, Anne Boleyn has to be played by, uh, is, that, is that what happened or whatever? Like, I don't know. Anne Boleyn was a black girl? They did a movie, a reboot, yeah. and, they, and, they're, and they're doing, they're doing a, another movie with like a mixed race woman. I'm all about that, but you shouldn't have to. Well, didn't okay. well, some like Academy Awards or something say you have to have like a diverse or minority group represented as like one of the top characters in the movie or you're not going to be uh, eligible for one of our awards? I got it. Well, that's how you know if a movie's Shameless. good or not, though. Do you want to... Do you want to uh, take the lead role in my movie about Shaka Zulu? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Would, you, would he be the British dude allowed? that fought Shaka? What? What? What's that about? I, I, I just Shaka signed Zulu, onto it. Shaka Zulu, dude, an African warlord. He that was, would be a good movie, by the way. You, is Crazy he, is general. He warlord? Was that? Yeah. Well, hold on. We can cast anyone in any role. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you'll be Shaka Zulu. Actor. You can is be this Shaka animator Zulu or live baby. action? Live action. Okay. Live action Seamus Coughlin as Shaka Zulu. You'll play the young Shaka, though, like the five-year-old. I feel like I'm too old for that role. No, never. Doesn't matter. Anybody can play anything. <laughs> oh my goodness! I see it. He, Shaka, was, he was dude. merciless, this dude. dude. Was in a good way. I mean, merciless, brutal. Dude. Oh my goodness, merciless. Good this way. is the Zulu. I mean, as a warlord leader, like Genghis Khan style, this guy was one of them. Is it a surfboard he's holding? That's no, a shield. shield. Those That's dudes shield, were wild, bro. man. The yeah, jaguar. They had, this, they had no, that, the jaguar. What was that? What was that weapon that was like a curved stick with a ball at the end of it? Mm -hmm. uh, the it's crazy called, uh, stuff, dude. Uh. Uh, anyway, he was like makes. a powerful name. warlord. But mm -hmm. my point is simply, they will, they will, like, their ideology makes no sense. If we're doing a period piece from, you know, 1500s Europe, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, who cares if it's, if it's a, you know, a black or Indian person playing yeah. the white characters. But you're not going to cast a Seamus Coglin as Shaka yeah, Zulu. Because that would just, that, that would, like, that would be racist and stupid, right? That would just be racist and stupid. But when you do the exact opposite of it, it becomes non-racist and smart <laughs> like all right okay i guess so i thought we were like bypassing the race thing in 20 2006 i was like man we really have started to see eye to eye brain to brain like i was actually getting to a point where i would just look at people i'd see their eyes and everything else was just kind of this gray black white green blue mesh of, of color and shade and i'm just like interfacing with their brain something happened in, in i guess obama pushed a little bit too much racism uh, subtly when he was in office, like the black kids, the black kids, and you're like, dude, it's just, it's not. Seamus is gonna wake up from the simulation. He's gonna be a black woman. <laughs> why was? Why is? It, why are you picking on me? I'm picking on <laughs> why you? Why is it always me? How's that picking on you? What's wrong with me? black women? No, not yeah. that he's because Tim, Tim is, is insinuating. No, she's you know, Ian bringing up like the AI stuff. You know, if we if we do go metaverse AI and all that stuff, people are going to identify as whatever they want. Like Rachel Dolezal. If she was in the metaverse, she, her, 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 you would, you would meet she her. She identifies and, anything, yeah. Yeah, well, as a black woman, and she's a white woman. Well, so you'll, you will have like white men, morbidly obese white men who identify as, as black, thin black women will do that. And you'll have like, you, you know, you'll, you'll have an Asian guy who identifies as a Mexican dude and stuff like that. Like 
people will just decide to, to present these ways in, in the AI, in the metaverse. Well, you know, it's interesting because we'll joke about people like Rachel Dolezal, right? Uh, and we'll talk about how ridiculous that is. But, I mean, really, race is actually on much more of a spectrum than sex is. Yeah. Right? You can it actually be is. half one and half the other. Like, if, you, right. have a, if you have a, a black mother and a white father, then you're going to be half black and half white. So those boundaries are actually not as well pronounced as the boundaries between the sexes are. And yet we'll say because of like some infinitesimal number of people who have uh, confusing anatomy oh, or birth oh, oh, defects that that means that that sex is on a spectrum. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like like Rachel, if Rachel Dolezal is 1% black, mm -hmm. then is she allowed to identify? This is the interesting question. No. That the, uh, no, no. Um, uh, it was College Humor, I think, who did this. Uh -huh. the, the, yes, the yes, panel yes. Asians. The panel of Asians, if you can identify as Asian. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, full, it's a full Asian, a half Asian, and a quarter Asian on a, on a judging panel. And a guy walks in who's an eighth Asian, and they're trying to determine what he's allowed to do. It's like, is he allowed to compliment Asian food? And it's like, yes, but not if there's anyone there who's more Asian than you. <laughs> That's right. Then you have to ask first. And then at the very end, the last gag is a guy walk in and he's like, my great, great grandma was black. And they're like, you're black. <laughs> very different. This is the melting pot, the United States. It's got to be intentional. This push for racism has got to be intentional. It, it wasn't supposed to be this way, man. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like this in the early 2000s at all. There was the Arab racism. That's probably what really started. It was 9-11, fear the Arab kind of mentality that they got forced on us. 2003 was crazy hyper racism dude people were banning muslims and crap 100 years of democrat rule in chicago and it is extremely racially segregated yep. they have done nothing to stop it they keep saying they're doing things to help people all they're doing is making it worse yep and and new york isn't isn't as bad as chicago but very very similar in terms of racial segregation and how the police handle all this stuff i mean during the 2020 summer of love college campuses started having uh they said if you come back to school in sept in in the fall we will have black only dorms in 2020 they have segregated dorms but uh because they're showing how non-racist they are like it's it's insane we've done a total we, we've gone completely backwards thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.